Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and today I'm going to be talking about referendums. It's everyone's favourite subject in the whole world, but no, I really do think this is something that's really important and needs to be talked about, because of course Catalonia is in the news a lot this past week for having a referendum, and I figured why not use that as an opportunity to talk both about Catalonia, this region in Spain right here, but also talk about referendums, because it is something I'm very passionate about, it's something I did a lot of research and I was considering making a video on a few weeks ago anyway, and I figured why not just go ahead and talk about a bunch of different referendums, and really some of the issues of referendums. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to take a side in this whole like Catalonia Catalonia thing, I really do feel like it's a big two-sided issue. Some people immediately jump to the side of like, wait, so Catalonia is a region with their own people and they had a referendum, 91.9% .9 of people vote for independence, therefore it should be independent. The other side just immediately says, nope, uh, you know, referendums, you can just dismiss that altogether, it was illegal and therefore Catalonia is a part of Spain, it must stay part of Spain. But the truth is, it's a lot more black and white than those people have you believe, and that's why I wanted to make today's video, to talk about referendums, you know, some of the good and a lot of the questionability of it, but also talk about the regions and the reasons and all these other things about referendums that hopefully you'll do enjoy. So a bunch of examples of referendums coming up, hopefully you'll do enjoy it. Let's get straight into talking about Catalonia, the region in Spain. So Catalonia, if you don't know, because you might just hear on the news, Catalonia is actually a part of Spain. So Spain, the country, it's just a region within Spain, but it's a heavily autonomous region. If you look on a map, you'll see it's called a historic nationality. Uh, Spain's made up of a bunch of different, it's a very confusing country. They have lots of different ways to region all their places. And uh, to be fair to people who believe in just Spanish uh, nationality, then here is the map of all these Spanish provinces, which is how some people might divide the country, and these four make up Catalonia, these four right here. Uh, by the way, isn't the Spanish uh, flag map pretty pretty here? But yeah, basically that is Spain right there, it's made up of 50 provinces, or it's made up of all these different regions, one of which is Catalonia, a historic nationality, which means it has some powers devolved. However, there's a lot of reasons they don't necessarily want to give them all the powers that they do want. Uh, one of those reasons is that uh, Catalonia is one of the richest regions of Spain. Uh, they have, even though they have about 15% of the population of Spain, which is pretty significant, uh, they actually have 19 to 20 percent of the GDP here so uh, yeah that means they're obviously a lot richer per person and that means that there is a whole like power struggle going back and forth there and you can probably imagine how that adds up so as well as just being a rich region of Spain because that gives them the economic reason to maybe want to back away uh, they are also their own distinct people Spain unlike a lot of countries never really had that like same all across the board kind of thing you might expect from other countries like you know England or something um, but you know Spain is actually made up of a lot of different people groups and a lot of different like languages and uh, you know particularly in particular when it comes to Catalonia they do speak their own language the Catalan language and about 50% uh, a little bit more than 50% depending on how you want to measure it but uh, you know over half the people that live there actually do speak the Catalan language as their first language which is crazy they speak Spanish of course too but they do speak Catalonian and one of the things that really kind of adds to the whole idea of like we should be independent is when Spain had a dictator yeah Spain had a dictator until like 1975, uh, Franco uh, actually really, really heavily suppressed the Catalonian language. So because of those factors, because of the political factor, because of the economic factor, they wanted to leave Catalonia. However, the Spanish constitution actually does bar that from taking effect, and this is why there is a big controversy. So that's the big deal behind the recent uh, you know, referendum right here. Uh, the they wanted to have a referendum because they want to be independent. Spain says you cannot go independent. All of Spain decides if a region leaves or not. And you can kind of see the, the side of that because like, oh yeah, you don't want your wealthiest regions just leave by itself. On the other hand, the people wanted to leave, apparently, and even though the, ref the turnout was low, uh, it's one of those things where you can be like, well, okay, that's that's why the referendum's there. It was illegal, therefore they're not doing anything based on it. And right now, we're waiting for them to decide what to do. If they do declare independence, it will probably not end too well. But on the other hand, all independence you know, movements are illegal in some way. Bunch of stuff you can see on both sides. But let's talk about referendums. That's the exciting bit. You know, flag, flag maps can only get you so far. Let's talk about referendums because the referendum they're thinking of, like, you know, if you, if you think like, oh yeah, they voted, they should be independent, it's as simple as one to two toy cat, why are you even having this whole video? Uh, then the referendum you're probably thinking of is something like, let's say, uh, you know, South Sudan or like the Ukrainian independence referendum. This is like a golden example of a referendum because back in 1991, when the USSR was falling apart, Ukraine was like, why don't we go independent? So they had a U independence referendum and 92% of people voted for independence and then the USSR just said, oh, you want to be independent? We'll let you be independent. It was <laughs> obviously the situation was kind of the reason they had to let that happen. But they, you know, they recognized them immediately. And Ukraine was just a happy, friendly state that was separate from the USSR. So easy as that, right? Ukraine goes independent. They have an independence referendum. That shows the independence referendum works, right? Well, what if I said there is a billion other examples of random re referendums that aren't this simple? This is a referendum that was also used as a political tool, as I'll be talking about later. Um, but to give you an example of just like, oh, this can kind of go wrong and isn't just necessarily, you know, referendum 
equals do the thing, because here we have the Aust Austrian Anschluss referendum. So there was actually a lot of referendums in uh, Nazi Germany and uh, places joining Nazi Germany, but Austria actually had a referendum to join Nazi Germany, and guess what? 99.7% of people on a 99% turnout uh, decided to join Germany. So there's no... There's no, like, you know, ambiguity there. It looks like Austria wants to join Nazi Germany, and therefore it's a good idea, right? There's a referendum and everything. So, obviously, comparing things to Nazis is, like, terrible, but it does prove the point, and it also... Uh, by the way, Germany had, like, uh, a referendum to remilitarize the uh, Rhineland, I believe, so... There's that too. But my point being is, you know, you can compare it to the Nazis. I think that's kind of silly, but, you know, that is there. But let's talk about the Kosovo independence referendum, because this is a better example. Even though everyone voted in favor, and therefore it's a good idea, and even though they're not joining the Nazis, and they're not being independent to be the Nazis, uh, Kosovo went independent, but because it did it in a way which wasn't necessarily... It wasn't legal by Serbia's, uh, uh, you know, definitions, and also no other country had a, a you know, interest in uh, recognizing them. To this day, Kosovo is still not recognized by so many countries in the world, and Kosovo runs into a whole range of issues. It's technically independent, and it has independence, and it is its own independent state, but it has a whole host of issues in terms of like, yeah, if you try to leave a state, even when you have 99% in favor, by the way, I don't know why this page is different. We're using Wikipedia for all the examples, just so you can like, yeah, this isn't me cherry picking numbers. This is just like the results. 913,000 people voted for with 164 against. Uh, the Serbians in the region, uh, like actually, um, they boycotted the vote. But in spite of that, still, you know, over 90% of people, even if you assume they all voted no, still voted for this. But it was a terrible thing for Kosovo to do. Even though they did it, it had so many ramifications. You might argue it was inevitable. You might argue it have to happen at some point. But still, it happened, but it wasn't necessarily the good thing in the end. It's still, you know, it doesn't just necessarily legitimize the state. Just because they voted for it and it happened, not every country has to recognize them based on that. And that's something really important that comes up a whole bunch. So anyway, let's just assume, though, that you've got an agreement with the country where they'll recognize you. Therefore, the world will recognize you. Because that's the thing that Catalonia needs. Un you know, unlike Kosovo, over here, by the way. This is Kosovo. Kosovo just kind of left, uh, you know, by having the referendum without approval. And to this day, still has, like, the fuzzy border on Google because it's not officially a country by some, you know, standards. Um, you know, only by some countries not recognizing it. Basically, um, to this day, because of Kosovo, it's still having issues. So what they need to do to avoid that is they need to be officially sanctioned by the government of the country they're from. This is actually how South Sudan got away from Sudan as well. This is how a bunch of countries, uh, Scotland was going to leave. They had the same uh, kind of approval. Basically, every, you know, whenever a country becomes independent, they need to be recognize for it to work. The US, you know, had a war to become, become independent, but everyone did recognize them soon afterwards, and that was an important part of being a state. You need to have a plan, at least, for recognition, and preferably you need to have permission for it. So, that's why the permission thing is such a big deal, because even the people in Catalonia, you gotta bear in mind, only 42% turned out to vote. The people who didn't turn out to vote, you know, not to vote against, are like, wait a minute, we shouldn't even be having this as a conversation unless Spain sanctions it. It's not a good idea, because if you go independent when you don't have the approval, uh, first of all, there's the issue of, like, no one will recognize you. But the second issue is they are in the European Union. They do use the euro. That would, you know, there's, there's problems where, like, the EU really needs to recognize you. And you need all 28 members of the EU to approve you to get back into the club, basically. Because of those issues, that's why you need to have the approval. And that's why the Kosovo referendum, it's a perfect example of, like, the people wanted it. But because the country didn't want it, it led to a bunch of issues, and that's a thing right there. So let's just assume you've got permission, or you've got a plan at least. Maybe they've got some clever, like, you know, leverage, like, guess what, we're holding the UN hostage in Barcelona. I don't actually understand what I'm saying. But let's just assume there's some way to get around that, or they have it, or something like that. Then referendums are still problematic, because if we look at the Scottish independence referendum of uh, 2014... Uh, there's going to be another one at some point in the far future, maybe. Uh, but the Scottish referendum of uh, 2014 was 55% no, 44% yes. 44% people wanted Scotland to be an independent country. Uh, that, that's, that's just the question right there. And 55% uh, of people wanted Scotland to remain inside the United Kingdom. So easy as that, right? They're going to remain in the UK, and that's that sorted. Or what if I said that this has actually now become the big issue in Scottish politics? It's not that it just goes away now that they've decided it. Because now, uh, you know, the... The thing that kind of proves, in my opinion, that referendums are kind of a fickle thing is that now that it's happened, they're like any change in circumstances ever, whether it's the UK uh, leaving the EU, whether it's this or that, any change in circumstance can be used as an argument of like, maybe that switches 10% to our side. It's like um, every single election in any country, it swings from one side to the other, right? They're just hoping they can hold the referendum on a time where it swings back because you'll never have a referendum the other way. No country ever is like, oh yeah, let's reverse that independence. And therefore the plan for any independence country is to be like, let's keep pushing till we bring that up again. And that's a big problem in Scotland. That's just their whole political system. The last election was just based on, should we have another referendum or not? 
And, you know, you, you shouldn't have to vote just based on, like, should we have a referendum in the future? So that's an issue you get with Scotland. Uh, in Quebec, there was uh, Quebec. Um, people get offended when I say Quebec. <laughs> but in Quebec, uh, they actually had a referendum. And it was even closer than that. 49.42% of people voted for yes versus 50.58. But no, that is such an absurdly close referendum. Just 50 uh, 50, sorry, 54,000, if I did my maths right in the spot, 54,000 people out of 5 million voters actually decided whether or not, um, you know, uh, Quebec went independent or not. Obviously, it had been a whole big issue. And apparently, uh, at the end, Canada wasn't going to allow them to have independence anyway. But let's just assume that was the deciding fate of their country. Something that proves just how small a margin there is and just how tiny it could have been the other way. If they went independent on 58,000 voters, isn't that kind of crazy? And uh, yeah, it's just my point there that when you get really close down to the line, you kind of show the silliness of referendums in a way. Like, uh, when a referendum is, you know, 91%, or when a referendum is 99.98%, it's easy to say that's the will of the people. How do you say the will of the people when you've got 44% or 55%? Or how do you say the will of the people when you have 50.58% or 49.42%? It's just such a hard thing to, uh, you know, really have a proper thing on there. But let's just say you want to get past that. You're like, nope. As soon as we get over the minute mark, that's how it's worth doing. What about the other issue of referendums? So this is another issue. So this is um, this is one a lot of people talk about as a Eurosceptic point. But um, the Lisbon Treaty, which was a big treaty to give a lot of powers to the EU from EU member states. Basically, over the time, I hope this isn't a political um, explanation. This is just me trying to explain it. But over time, the EU needs more powers and it gets those powers from its member states. So they have treaties to do that. The Treaty of Lisbon was a particularly controversial one. So Ireland said, let's hold a referendum. They held a referendum and 46% of people were for it but 53% said no so because they didn't approve it the uh, you know the uh, the treaty couldn't go through except you know what happened they had a second referendum except this time there was a whole bunch of advertising they did some you know like um token concessions basically they did the same referendum again but they made it clear that Ireland really really needs to vote yes for this to happen and they did it so they just voted yes and it goes show the exact same thing but a second vote it generally changed the results of the vote by a significant amount. By just having advertising, by just saying you need to do it and like really stressing the importance, you can change the thing of the vote. And to me, that kind of shows that referendums are a political tool more than anything else. Like in um, you know in Kosovo, it was maybe not in Kosovo, but in in you know in, in, in let's let, let's go back to let's go back to the Nazi one, right? This was clearly a tool used by the Nazi Party to show, look, everyone. Austria wants to be part of us. Do you want to deny them their independence, right? And that was, like, not a good thing in that case. Or in Scotland's case, uh, you know, that's, that's a good example. But, you know, in any case, it's more a political tool by the people to show a support for something and to, you know, really just try and edge it over the line. And it just kind of goes to show my opinion, when you have the same referendum twice and you just get a different result, and the, the right result, the, the one the people who held the referendum wanted, it, there's a part of you that goes, mm, that's a bit dodgy. And to add more to this dodginess factor, here is the SWIFT referendum from 2014. I know, referendums, it's, it's crazy stuff, but I swear I'm really into... <laughs> it's, it's weird to be so into referendums, but this is something I just... Uh, I, I, I'm passionate about referendums, okay? Let's just, let's just get past that. So this is one that really sticks out to me because Switzerland is one of the few countries in the world. Yeah? So if you don't know, Germany and Austria to this day, because of this thing, rarely use referendums. There's never been a, a countrywide referendum, as far as I'm aware, besides uh, reunification stuff. But, uh, you know, since then, there, there's been no real uh, referendums. However, um... In Switzerland, they hold referendums on a really regular basis, and they're one of the few countries in the world you can point to and say they do referendums right. They do them so regularly, and it means every citizen is a part of all the decisions. And they make a bunch of really good, uh, you know, decisions on stuff. So, um, you know, they, they, they'll make, ch you know, they'll actually vote for their own tax increases if they think it's good for the country. They do good things like that because a lot of their country is based on referendums. It's a good thing. It's a good place. However, bit like every any other country, they had a uh, you know a referendum on mass immigration. Uh, it's literally just. Do you accept the federal proposal against mass immigration, which was to put quotas on the number of uh, uh, number of like people who could migrate into Switzerland? So easy enough, right? Easy, uh, you know, referendum. You might think to yourself, I have a strong opinion on this, and everyone has a strong opinion on immigration. Somehow, I don't know how that's the case. Like to me, it doesn't seem whatever. Everyone has a strong opinion on immigration, one way or the other. So everyone goes to vote on it, and everyone votes yes. We would like there to be a federal population, uh, population initiative against mass immigration. However, again, same issue of like 50.3% versus 49.67%. And there's the second issue on this one, which is that Switzerland cannot limit the immigration to their country. They're part of the Schengen area. They're part of the freedom of movement area, which means that they have to accept people. There is no way they can limit the number of people that come into their country. And 
that just means they had a referendum on something they could not do. This is this is the kind of like next level of this where it's like populist referendum where you have it to prove a point. They were hoping to prove that people didn't want it maybe and it just happened and that's like, oh, people don't want immigration. But you know, when you have a referendum on something you can't physically do, what do you do about that? And the answer is the EU made a very token um, gesture to them. They're like, you can prefer Swiss people, I guess. They just gave them abilities to do something they could do anyway, and then that's how they sort sorted that. But the people who voted yes didn't get what they wanted. The people who voted no, you know, they, this referendum didn't achieve anything, and the fact that it happened in Switzerland, of all places, the, the bastion of direct democracy just goes to show there are some issues you cannot have referendums on or, you know, so if you don't have the power on a re uh, an issue, you shouldn't have a referendum on it because what happens if people vote for it, you know? Um, and as my favorite example of just like stupid referendums that are swayed by something, because, you know, whatever whatever you think of this, like, I don't, I, I don't think that we shouldn't have the ability to vote on that stuff. I think we shouldn't have the ability to vote on something we don't have control of. But let's, you know, let's say you do think that. Let's talk about the, this is, this is my favorite example of just like, this is why referendums are not okay. So in 2011, um, the UK had a referendum to switch to the alternative vote. If you've ever watched um, CGP Ground YouTube does a really great series of um, videos on voting systems. Alternative vote is like pretty good. It's better than first past the post by a pretty significant amount. Like it's just objectively better, uh, but it's not as good as some of the better ones they have out there, Germany system or anything like that. But you know, the AV system is a pretty good voting system. So uh, basically we had a whole vote on it. It was part of a coalition agreement. And because of massive marketing and like the fact that it was a very confusingly worded question, the fact that they forced them to pick the, you know, when they had the whole agreement, they forced them to pick the least impressive new system. Basically what happened is 67% of people vote no. And you might think, well, people just don't want a new voting system. Well, what if I showed you that it really was down to marketing with stuff like this? This is, this is really marketing in a referendum that clearly swayed some people because if you explain to anyone the new voting system, not anyone, I feel like you maybe get like a 50-50 at best, like who knows, but you don't get down to like 33% of people being like, oh, this is just a crazy thing Nick Clegg wants to, my point being, is crazy stuff like this. This makes no sense. He needs bulletproof vests, not an alternative voting system. Why? How are you choosing? What, in what government is it like, we can do one thing this year, should we get bulletproof vests for the soldiers, or should we change the voting system? Th those are our two options, which, yeah, whatever. So my point being, I'm angry about this sort of stuff. Uh, in case you're not angry about this, because you don't remember 2011, because I didn't remember it at the time, uh, then maybe this, this, this thing right here. Again, I'm someone who's like, you're a skeptic and not not pro EU for the most part. And even then, this is wrong on so many levels and it's clever wrong on so many levels. So when you do something like this, you can kind of trick people because, um, you know, let's let's not talk about the EU thing. Too divisive. But the point being is it's like multiple levels of wrong so that some amount of wrong gets trapped in you. S same with this, right? Like, whoa, there's a, you know, we might, we might lose soldiers if we change our voting system. 250 million? 350 million a week <laughs> which um again for the reason the reason this is wrong by the way just very briefly is because that's the wrong number so people argue over the number rather than arguing over the fact that like you would give that to something else anyway my point being uh is th there's that but then finally that brings us to where we are here so we have referendums and a whole bunch of stuff and they end up in really stupid ways but then we also have this thing right here which brings us back to like a whole bunch of issues combined in one first of all what is the the motivation of the people holding the referendum? They kind of, they you know, they want to get the powers from Spain. A lot of people argue they only really want it to get more powers. If you have an independence referendum, you can kind of trick the, go, uh, you know, it, once you seem like you're really leaving, they'll give you more. Think about your girlfriend. If she's just like, you know, ah, oh, can you, can you do this for me? You're like, nah, I'll leave you if you don't. Okay, then. Uh, it's, it's a little bit like that. That's one of the things you could argue. I don't know if that's true or not in this case, but you could say it is. And I'm just saying... Holding a referendum is not just a means to ask the question. It's a means to do a whole bunch of other stuff because that referendum is a whole, you know, again, it's it's a tool that you can use in a bunch of ways. And that's why I'm not immediately on the side of like, if you have an independence referendum, your country should be independent. I, I, again, I'm not saying, I, I think you should if a lot of conditions are met because they had a 42% turnout. And that's why this is tricky because we don't know why they had the referendum. If independence is their real goal, I mean, it's probably their goal, but... We don't know for certain. Um, we don't know if having 42% of voters is enough for any like international recognition. We don't know what the plan is if it goes through. And really, I don't think they expected this to go this far either. Like what, what do you do when the country you're trying to leave doesn't let you leave even after you say you're gonna leave? 
I don't know for certain. And to give you another example of this happening, in, uh, you know, this this is a way stronger example. In Iraqi Kurdistan, uh, they actually had an independence on, uh, sorry, a referendum on independence. 92% of people voted yes on a 72% turnout. So they definitely had over 50% and a majority, because in this case, there's less than a majority of the people. When, even once they have the majority, what do they do about that? Iraq says no, and then what do they do? And this that's kind of where you are right here. Like, I'm in support of the idea of independence, of the idea of having a referendum on it, but the issue of, like, does the referendum mean you definitely get to go independent? I don't think so, because then you have the issue of, like, well, what defines an area that should go independent? Because let's just say me and my house right now, I have a referendum with just myself. Can my house go independent? Well, I mean, that doesn't count, right? Yeah, we can all agree. What about me and my small town? Let's say I live in uh, Colchester. That's not a small town. That's a city, I think. 100,000 people all vote to leave the UK. Well, no, no. It's got to be like a region with significant regions. So, so what about Yorkshire in the UK? Or what about, you know, let's think of another example. Let's just think about what about if, um, you know, like one of the one of the states in America wants to leave, they have a referendum. Should they be allowed to? If it's California, where they have a lot of your resources, no, because that's not fair to the other. You know, there's uh, the point being here is like the definitions of how people can leave a country vary from people to people. But on the other side of things is like, no, this is this is like uh, an inevitable thing. Like if you went back in time, people would say the same stuff about Bosnia, Croatia, Slovenia. They're better as independent countries than they were as this huge Yugoslavian thing. And the truth is, is you don't know which one it is until time happens. Like is is um, uh, Catalonia better as a part of Spain? Maybe, <laughs> but yeah, you can't uh, jumping to one side or the other. It just involves so many unknowns, and people are just projecting their own answers into there. And that's why I say, if you immediately say Catalonia has to be a part of Spain, you're probably wrong. If you immediately say Catalonia has to be independent because they want to be, that's that's not just how it works, you know. Um, and that's what my point is here. And if you want to know my opinion, because I've been trying to remain vaguely neutral in this, again, you might think I'm making broad statements, but I'm really just saying like that's how I'm pretty sure that goes, um, then I really think when it comes to independence, you just run into this issue of like, when do you stop? Because how, how the world is, I, I have like a bias against how things are right now. I think we have a pretty good number of countries. I think with the exception of maybe Kurdistan, uh, maybe Catalonia, maybe like a state or two in America, most places are kind of happy how they are now. Because if you have more and more countries, then you run into the issue of like, eventually once country splitting becomes okay, then it becomes tactical to split into multiple countries. For instance, um, if you split into multiple countries, you get multiple UN votes, or in the in the US, for instance, if you split into multiple states, you get a way more Senate votes. So if California split into 12 states, it'd get 24 Senate seats. And that's why you need the permission from everyone else a little bit. Even though it sounds awful to say that, that's why if you wanted to become a new state in America, you'd need the other states' permissions. If you wanted to become an independent country, you need other countries' permissions. And that's all I want to say here. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy me rambling about referendums for 23 minutes. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you did learn something here. Hopefully um, you'd say something constructive in a comment down below. Somebody was just going to be like, No! Catalonia! Viva la... No wait, Viva la Catalonia? Does that even work? Um, and I would like... I, I think it'd be interesting if Catalonia went independent. I'd, I'd go check it out. I'd, I, I, don't have a, I don't have a dog in this fight, but hopefully you can see why I explain that that way. Uh, so thank you very much for watching today's video. Um, and I guess second channel, don't care, goodbye. I'm curious how this goes, like, I don't think I've ever spoken about referendums before, and I probably won't speak about them again. <laughs> uh.